Hi, Gavin. Hi, Roger. How did you get started here? Well, it's a really interesting story, Roger. I used to be a software sales guy, kind of hit that midlife crisis and needed to do something different. Had an opportunity to help take down an old barn, found a lot of old granite, and the rest is history. Well, a lot of old granite you have here. And what can you tell me about this piece? Well, Roger, what's interesting about this is this piece actually helps us date when this stone was worked. If you look at all these chisel marks, these, these wedge marks, this technology we know was employed in the 1800s to 1870s. After that, the technology changed. Now, I noticed over here, this is what we do now. We take and drill a hole with a hammer drill, feathers and wedges, and split it off. Here, you split a new piece off of an old block. That's exactly right. So tell me about the history of this stone. Where does it come from? Where do you get it? Well, it, it, it is interesting. We get it from we, all around New England. We work with contractors, site guys, demolition guys who come across stone in their uh, travels. What about this piece right here? Well, what's interesting about this, Roger, is um, this came off the Boston Harbor. One of our contractors had a job to re redo a seawall right on the harbor, and the, the area had been an old granite dump, and they had actually pushed, pushed the material in the right in, right, they used it as erosion control, but half the stone was right below the high water mark, and it got covered with barnacles. Yeah, that explains all the little barnacles on it. Huh? Exactly. Now, I couldn't help but notice this huge piece of stone. It looks like it was a wellhead. Well, that's a, that's a good guess, Roger, but this is actually part of the Boston sewer system. This piece would have been used to uh, hold a manhole cover. How would you use something like this nowadays? Uh, let me show you. So here, Roger, we've put two stones together to use as a bench. Boy, that would look like it's been in the garden forever, wouldn't it? That's right. Here are a couple of standing stones that could be used as markers. We actually do need a property marker on our job. Here's this old piece of curbing that looks like it'd be a good bench. Boy, I could just see that fitting in in a small garden as a bench. That would be nice. Yeah. Here's one of those sewer casings that actually was split in half. We thought it would kind of make an interesting lantern holder. I think it would make a real statement at the end of a driveway. What a nice piece. Now, I know a lot of this old granite gets cut into stairs, and that's what we're here for today. So here's an old piece of road curbing that actually turns out makes great steps. You see on this stone, this is an old piece of granite where they barely dressed the back of it because the earth came down into it, it was holding the road back. The top of the stone, which was seen, they actually spent quite a bit of time to make that look good and they dressed the top. So this curbing actually lined the road. Th that's exactly right. So if you take that piece of curb and then you then lay it down flat, you end up with really great step material. It's about 18 inches wide, seven, eight, inch, eight inches tall, and it's really a, a, a good step. Yeah, it works pretty well, but it's really dark. Yeah, this, this stone is dark. This is Rockport granite. It comes from the North Shore of Boston. So I think we're looking for something a little lighter in color. Well, Roger, I put aside four that I thought might work. This is Deer Isle granite from the coast of Maine. It is a little bit lighter, has a nice garnet fleck to it. Well, we have four, but I need five. Well, I've got a fifth. We're just going to have to split it down. Let's do it. This piece is five and a half feet long. We're gonna to have to split that down to four feet. Brad's gonna use the hammer drill to get that started. Brad's drilling four holes, four inches apart. He'll then put a wedge with a feather on each side of it into each hole. He taps each wedge a little at a time until the granite splits. Perfect, that's just what I wanted. The other thing we wanted was a property marker, and I see you've set up this six-foot granite piece for that. 
Now we could just take and mount the numbers on flush like that, but our landscape designer would like us to recess them into the stone. That's what Tim's starting to do right now. designer is calling for the recess to be painted black. We're using a specially formulated paint for stone. Finally, we'll use some epoxy to hold the house numbers in place. Gavin, the post looks great. I know it takes a lot of hard work, but the end result is worth it. Thanks for coming out, Roger. We are ready to set this house marker right now, aren't we? We are. We're going to pick it up with a bobcat and set it right in place. <laughs> what else could you pick it up with? What does that thing weigh? How big is it? Six feet tall, 18 inches wide, probably close to 1,000 pounds. No doubt. That thing is a monster. So what we're going to do, we had to pick it up to protect the numbers. So once it comes over to the hole, we're going to spin it around. So you guys actually rigged it up so the numbers were facing the bobcat. Right, because I wanted to make sure that these straps didn't hit those numbers. Oh, I see, okay. So it's up to us to give it a little turn. Yeah, we're gonna get them down a little more. Okay, see if we can spin it now. Take it up a little, Tom. Okay. Yep, that's pretty good. Let it down. Looks much better. Oh, yeah. Take a measurement now, Kev. 51 and a half. OK, we got to go back some more. And right there, hold. Right there. there, hold. Oh. OK, who? Let down, Tom. All right, let off on that. Let off, check it for level. Bingo. That is good this way, too. We're good. Wow. Take the straps off. All right, let's stand back, take a look. Perfect. Perfect, Roger. How's it look from back there? You know, Kevin, sometimes I put more emphasis on my own eye than the level, but I think that looks dead on right there. I won't tell Tommy, but I'm with you. All right, so what do we do? They're going to start putting some pack in, and then they're going to take and pack that down around it. No concrete needed. This thing's so far in the ground, it's never going to move. All right, that thing's awesome. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.